Hey guys, welcome to the FIFA 21 85 icon Nemanja Vidic player review. So for this review, I played Nemanja Vidic as my right centre back in the 4 triple 2 formation and used him with a shadow chem style. So let's see how this beast performed for me in game. So I am a massive Manchester United fan and the combination of Vidic and Rio was honestly the golden era for us in recent times. And as you can tell, I have a strong amount of nostalgia attached to this card. But I'm not going to be biased from this review, I'm going to be purely objective. I want to help you guys make an informed decision about picking this guy up from icon swaps or is he worth the steep price tag of 415k. So let's start off with everyone's concern which is his pace. And honestly, I expected a bit less but this card was good enough in the pace department. He is no Rafael Varane but when I used him with the shadow chem style, he did his best to catch up to most attackers and to be fair to him, he actually did. And pace overall, in my opinion, wasn't the concern with this card because it was more than adequate for me. He also defends like a tank whenever the ball is within his wingspan. He has some superb defensive stats. He has great stand and slight tackle, amazing interceptions and he has that aggression of 90. Honestly, you can actually feel that high aggression because he just press and rushes down opponents in a flash. Now, his passing from the back was also good, it just got the job done. Mind you that he has the 2-star weak foot and passing with the weak foot will be horrible. So stick to passing with the stronger foot and for me, it was more than adequate and shouldn't be any concern to you guys. Now, how did Vidic feel on the ball? And this is quite interesting, he has 47 dribbling which is horrible for a defender. But honestly, when you're twisting and turning and jockeying opponents, he doesn't feel half bad. He feels pretty smooth to be completely honest and he feels like a relatively agile defender. But on the ball, when you notice his dribbling, twisting and turning with him on the ball is a bit of a concern. I would just get the ball with him and release a pass, not spend too much time dilly-dallying with this guy on the ball. And if you don't dilly-dally with defenders on the ball, it shouldn't be a concern in my opinion. Now his defending within his wingspan was absolutely superb for me. Whenever the ball was within Vidic's arc, he did the job amazingly well for me. He just pressed opponents with that mad 90 aggression. He's like a mad dog and he gets pretty much every tackle he contests. Uh, he has high strength, great tackling statistics and overall defensively he was solid for me. I had no complaints there whatsoever. He is also a beast in the air and wins you 9 out of 10 headers he contests. He could also be used as a dangerous weapon during corners because he has 91 jumping with 88 heading accuracy. Unfortunately, I couldn't take any corners because I was just too busy letting my opponents run into Vidic and I played Division 1 so dispossessing opponents is a real bitch. So overall Vidic is a good defender but he isn't elite tier for me. If you're expecting to get an elite tier endgame centre back at this stage of the game with this card, look elsewhere because he felt good overall but yet he felt generic. And what I mean by that is the likes of a Diego Carlos upgraded, I mean the team of the tournament Diego Carlos or a Rafael Varane base card will do an equal job if not better than this card. The cards like a Diego Carlos, team of the tournament or a Rafael Varane both have phenomenal defending stats combined with amazing pace stats and physical stats for days and these guys will actually overshadow Vidic when you pair them together and you can actually see a visible difference between the two defenders. My advice to you guys is that he is definitely not an endgame defender. So if you're a Manchester United fan and are looking for a starter defender to fit into your team at this early stage of game and you're just playing swaps for fun, not too seriously invested in it, pick up this card. He will do a great job for you in game, but he's not endgame or elite tier by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're spending 420k on this card, it is definitely not worth it. You can just pick up the likes of a Van Dyke who will do a better job than this card. You can pick up an inform Joe Gomez which will do a better job than this card. You can also use Varane or Diego Carlos's base card which will do an equal or better job than this card. So that 420k price tag simply because he is an icon is simply not justified. I hope you guys were able to understand the gist of what I'm telling you and if you were able to grasp what I'm telling you, I'm super happy because I would have successfully advised you to pick up this card or not. For me, I'm not gonna pick up this card because I'm already pretty set with my generic and yes, you can hate me, my Joe Gomez, Baran, blah, 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 defensive combination. And I'm gonna use my icon swaps more on packs 
or probably save it for the likes of a Frank Rijkaard, etc, etc. So I'm going to rate 85 Icon Nemanja Vidic an 8 on 10. And I'm also going to give him a value for coins of a 6. He is simply not worth that price tag. But if you want to pick him up from Icon Swaps, if you're a United fan and you want a starter Icon Defender, go ahead because then he's virtually free for you guys and money shouldn't be an issue. I hope you guys found this review helpful and if you did, please drop a sub on the channel and a like on the video. It would mean the world to me and have a great day ahead guys.